right with a, a mic buffer? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I went to the second of the online audience. Oh, yeah. uh, Okay, thank you very much. I've already introduced myself, Beatrice Wittonen, CEO, CEO of I just want, on behalf of the Africa Forum for Advocate Advisory Services, uh, which is our non organization, we are a country chapter. Uh, um, Dr. Sri Mati is the executive director and is not here. But we are expecting Mr. Max Olcott anytime. Um, and then also on behalf of Ufas, the board, you've had some of the members here. The chairperson is sick, he was supposed to actually be here and welcome you. But you are really welcome because I know this is a very, very busy time of the year, especially for the non state actors, because many of them they have the year winding up in December. So many of them are running all around in the field, uh, given the period of the COVID, the heavy COVID period where people are not moving. So most people are in the field, we're talking to them and they say that we are in the field. So for you who are here, we really want to appreciate uh, you having come. And uh, you are welcome and feel at home. Okay. Uh, before I go into the workshop overview, I just want for the people who are new, sorry, we have, I think we had some, some, someone is coming from the office doing the brochures, but the Uganda Forum for Agriculture Advisory Services is actually, it brings together a culture of extension and advisory services actors from all the sectors, public, private, um, farm organizations, you had some of the people saying, I'm a member, I'm a member, academia, even including the schools, the NGOs, and even the media. Because we look at the media as one of those uh, people and agencies which actually disseminate a lot of information to the value chain actors, especially the farmers. So we, that's the state organization. Um, and this is actually part of a, a broader network. The, the Uganda Forum, we are at the national level, we are a country chapter of the continental uh, uh, chapter. That is the Africa Forum. And then we have also the Africa Forum for So there is one for each of the country of the problems. And so for those who are members of UFAS, you are actually part of this big, big nature. Um, and UFAS focuses on, on, on four main things, networking, information sharing, the different platforms, and so it's uh, mainly this one, this thing, one which I've talked about, the continent and whatever, the main focus, sharing information. Um, way back in 2014, there was a concern, no, 2004, there was a concern that, you know, when you look at the, the three, I don't know that they are pillars or components of agriculture development, that is research, academia, and extension. The other two were so developed. They are so networked. They, they are really, the capacity is so high up there. And then the extension, which was the power, and actually, which is a very important link to, uh, to, to the, the, the receivers of the messages and the research products and all that, was very weak as far as 
network is concerned. It's like every extension person was the near corner. You know, you find an extension worker maybe in a sub county or in a district, and they're doing their own thing, and they don't actually many of them like link up to any other person. They just do their work. Maybe they use it in the information which they got from the when they were at college or university. And so that was the concern which started this networks. It's like the extension people, extension is very important. Extension and advisory services is very important. And even these people that are there near how much they do very good and they maybe produce and they bring out very good uh, you know graduates, they research and they do their you know their products and they are there. If you have extension week, you won't be able to so that is how they started and for it is they have started before the global forum. But when it started, then there was a need, they realized at a global level that you have to have at least all the different continents. That is the, the nature I can say. So networking, then capacity development, you do capacity development. This is not like what the academia does. But there are different, different things which you can build capacity of extension people. Um, they, 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 are, they are topics and subjects which can, things which come in and they are new. You know, for example, I don't know what is new now in extension, in extension or what is the new thing? You know, there are things like platforms, do extension, extension people in so innovation platforms and all that, they know it. Uh, there's a time when I think we have to get for team. We have to get someone to come and talk about GMOs. What are they? Do the extension people know it? Or they also just talk about uh, it's like any other person saying they are good and just flash it off. As extension people, we want people to have the right information and then they pass it on. And then, lobby and that will have to be the number of people. When, it is when, um, when they were formed, when they were changing from nuts and going to having the directorate and all that, offers were are very, very, very active in that. We also lobby for other things. There is something which we have been working on the issue of professionalization. We worked with the ministry right up again from 2014, and up to now we are still working together. But in this workshop, that is not what I'm going to cover. Then professionalization. Professionalism, I've already talked about it. That's what our main focus. Uh, they will bring the, the brochures and you'll get the details of that. And uh, we have a participation reaching out to over 1,000 actors in different ways. But the members who have talked about, who have said they are members, we have about 250 members who are paid up and not paid our general assembly. My boss, you're welcome. Uh, the purpose of this dialogue, um, we want to dialogue on the current capacity of the EAS. EAS is Advocate Education and Advanced Services to deliver effective with CSA innovation. So, as we inform both policy and practice with regards to building resilience. Have food systems in Uganda and in Patrick's Hall and the National Development Board. So we we know we have CSA, agriculture, I mean a applied based smart agriculture. And now we are looking at extension, the capacity needs. What we really as extension people, do we have the capacities? Do we have, you know, can we really deliver? In this, in, in uh, within primary smart agriculture. Um, and then the objectives of this is we want to develop a common understanding of CSA and its central role in developing resilience, resilience to our foods, highlight the capacity, the, the current capacities, that gaps and needs for the effective countrywide CSA service delivery, agree on key policy recommendations. For ensuring our food system resilience, establish a national CSA steering platform to promote integration of, of upgrade policy recommendations at national and local levels, 
And also, we talk about initiatives. Uh, we expect at the end of this, and some of them may be outcomes of the dialogue, it will input into that. And then the National CSS Steering uh, Platform established and CSA profile of participants and database before maybe now here we can say initiative. Uh, and then who are the participants? We have different categories of CSA stakeholders, the public sector, the ministries, departments and the agencies at that level. And then we have the vote. how many people fall in that category? Does that, that include researchers? Ah, uh, yeah, I think they're not here. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, so we have one person. One other person has told me so that way. But we had from other ministries. Where? Where? Means of what? The nurse. The nurse. Yeah, you are in public sector. Yeah, public sector. <laughs> okay, and then development partners. Any? Aha. Uh -huh. This will have one house. Well, sorry, just let me clarify. So we're a research institute. I think we need, oh, a, sorry, we need a research. Okay. <laughs> ah, research, yeah. ah, we need a research. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ufas and Afas. Okay. Uh, then we have CSOs. CSOs are the ones which are running around. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, and then academia. Okay, pharma organizations. And I forgot media. <laughs> media, pharma's media, you're welcome. Okay, at least each one of us is really is that research? And research is public sector. But there is also my public sector. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we will, of course, have presentations, we have plenary sessions as we are having. We also have some breakaway sessions. And uh, for this, we are at the welcome remarks which have given, but we also have an introduction on the CADAP XP project. Uh, we will have an opening remarks and we put there so that at least our, uh, uh, our uh, 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 the ministry, the ministry people who are going to give remarks, at least they get to know what it is all this about. Uh, opening should have been at the beginning, but they are opening remarks from my year. And then we'll also have remarks from the Ministry of Water uh, and Environment. And then we, we then after that we'll have uh, the main, main um, presentation, which is overview of the AES capacity, capacities, that is status, gaps, and recommendations. Um, we also have Questions, uh, guided, a, a guided discussion. Then we'll have a discussion on establishing the national theory platform, profiling of participants. And then after lunch, when everybody has gone, there is we have the UFAS technical working group, and I will request members for us to remain and discuss what we have to do next week. Thank you very much.